Okay, uh, today I want to talk specifically about this uh, individual who has a couple videos um, online and he misleads a lot of people. You can see there he's got at least 560,000 hits. Okay, and he's from Fermilab and this uh, bozo known as Don Lincoln, he talks nonsense. And I want to expose this guy and I think we should dis ridicule these people. First, because they make a lot of money on your, at your expense. They, they, the uh, Fermilab is maintained by the U.S. government. And so, uh, you know, taxpayer money, that's what pays for this fellow to, to talk nonsense. And that's why I like to ridicule them. And I want these people out of science. They're not scientists. They're religious fanatics. And they have no explanations for things, something simple as light. Okay. And that's what I want to expose today. Okay. So here, um, here is a summary of why this fellow talks nonsense, okay? And I'm going to go through each one of these, okay? Let me put this here to the side, okay? And we'll go step by step here. Uh, first of all, uh, this uh, individual, he uh, invokes, um, uh, what is it, Niels Bohr and Ernst Rutherford's uh, planetary model of the atom. That's the model that they use in quantum mechanics to this day. They use it at CERN, uh, the Large Hadron Collider. They use it at uh, SLAC, the Stanford Linear Accelerator, and also at Fermilab. All these places, they, they, use, um, they use the uh, planetary model of the atom. And here it is. Uh, this is from their site, by the way. I'm not putting words in their mouth here because this is, this is the atom they show. Okay, let me show you here. Here, you see it? That's the atom. That's the atom they're going to use, okay? What is it? A bunch of beads. Uh, those, by the way, are not uh, um, wires. Uh, those, uh, those ellipses there, those are supposedly the trajectories, you know, the contrails, if you, can, if you will, uh, of the uh, electron bead as it goes around the atom. So they always draw them because if you take them out, you wouldn't understand the picture if they take those wires out of there. So they leave the wires in there and you think you're looking at an atom. Okay, so this is the atom that, uh, that Fermilab's gonna use, this uh, fellow's gonna use, okay? So there we have our, our first problem. Okay, what other problems do we have? Well, the second one is uh, orbiting electron bead moves in transverse waves. Uh, you know, one of the reasons they never illustrate these things is because they can't. And I'll show that in a second here. You can't illustrate, you cannot illustrate. All, I, I, imagine a, uh, a prism, okay? It's got all these atoms that form the prism. And you have within each atom, you have all these electron beads that are going around in every direction, right? That's, that's what quantum mechanics proposes. And these guys are saying, you know, that all those electrons that are going around their atoms, they're not coming out of the atoms. There's no ionization. And there is no electricity. All we have is just a solid there, you know, a, a, a prism, you know, and light comes in there. And so how do they explain the slowing down of light through this prism, which suddenly they claim that slows uh, light down? Well, the way they explain it is, say, well, all these electrons form a wave, and the waves is slower than the incoming wave of light, and so it slows down the wave of light. That's that's their explanation. So let's see if we can visualize first, okay, before we continue, see if we can visualize uh, this um, electron wave, the waves of electrons, okay? I tried to make, uh, illustrate this thing. You tell me if I succeeded, okay? <laughs> Here it is, okay? I want you to tell me how that, all those uh, atoms that form the uh, prism, right? The electron beads that are going around the nucleus, how that turns into a Fermilab wave, which is w how they're going to explain the slowing down of light. I mean, how does uh, the guy on the left uh, become the one on the right? How do you make a transverse wave that moves in one direction and slows the wave of light? Remember, number one is the wave of the electron wave. Number two is the, the red one 
is supposedly the one of light, and then the third one is the summation of these two. Okay, that's that's their argument. This is out of their website. Okay, and the question is, how does uh, that um, uh, the uh, electron beads of the prism uh, equal number one, which is a very slow moving wave? Okay, as you can see, it's moving very slowly. I mean, you cannot even conceptualize it. You cannot visualize what they're saying, and that's why they never draw it. They never illustrate this stuff because it's unillustratable. You cannot illustrate this, okay? But uh, I don't plan to hold my breath, but it's up to them. They, they have to illustrate it. I did my best. That's, that's the way I see it. I cannot illustrate what they're saying, but maybe they're smarter than me. I don't know. Okay, light is a waving electric field. This is what they say, okay? But field is a bunch of vectors, magnitude and direction. And uh, here's proof. Those people who like proof and evidence, here we have proof and evidence, okay? We go to the definition. We find, uh, at least in the Wikipedia, you can find other sources. You'll find something very similar. It says, uh, field is a physical quantity. What is a quantity? Is that a physical object? Can you hold a quantity in, in your hand? No, you can hold the potato in your hand. You can hold a bag of potatoes. You might have 10 uh, potatoes. That's a quantity of 10. You don't hold 10. What you hold is potatoes. These people are saying field is a quantity. Okay? And that's in, for the purposes of so-called physics, mathematical physics, that has value for each point in space-time. In other words, it's a concept. That's what field is. It's a concept, an abstract concept, and this is what they're going to wave. They're going to move it up and down, this concept. You know, they're going to move love. They're going to move information. They're going to move intelligence up and down. They're moving concepts around. And in uh, mathematics, you know, they have a field as a set. Now, what is a set? Well, that's got to do with mathematics. If for those who took math, you'll know what I mean. It's just a collection. That's it, of whatever. And so that, again, a collection is not a physical object, okay? So um, that's the starting point for debunking the field notion. But here is, um, here's what they show. This is what, a field, what, uh, what uh, they show for light, okay? You have two fields, the electric and magnetic field. What are you staring at? A bunch of vectors. If you look, those arrows, again, are not engine arrows. What you, those arrows point to are um, uh, quant uh, magnitude and direction. That's what they have. What is that? That's a number line. Th what you're seeing is a bunch of number lines that are flowing. They, they turn this into a something physical or something that you can see so that you get fooled into believing that you're staring at something that is physical when it's not. What you're seeing is a bunch of concepts, okay? That's what that is. Okay, uh, what's the next one? Um, does not explain the physical mechanism of wave interaction. See, is the, is the photon a physical entity? Does it have size? Does it have mass? All this other stuff. And here you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I try to illustrate this. And this is also using their stuff, okay? I'm not putting words in their mouth. Uh, what you're seeing is what they put. They say, we've got these waves. Okay, fine, we got the waves. Uh, what are those waves? Are, are those waves just a string? Uh, is it a rope? Is it a wire? What are we looking at? And the question is, uh, okay, whatever that is, how do they interact? They're not telling you how those two waves are physically interacting. They just say, look, if you add the number one plus number two, you get number three. That's all they're saying. And what you're seeing there is, again, amplitude and not uh, anything related to, to light. You, you, you're not even seeing a standing wave because the only reason that uh, uh, gives you the sensation of being a standing wave is that it's uh, straight uh, across. In other words, it's horizontal. Somehow it, it doesn't fall. Why doesn't the wave fall down? You know, and I showed that the other day. Let's see if I can get myself back up here. Show that the other day. You know, here, if I don't hang on... To, to this on the other end here, that's, that's what we should be seeing. The wave should fall if nothing is supporting the wave or if the wave is not attached at the other end. And these people do this artificially. They have this like a stick and going like that without anyone holding the other end. Why does that wave stay straight, more or less straight? You know, why does it flow horizontally without it falling? You know, especially when they claim also that gravity uh, affects light. 
So, so we got a lot of problems there in their physical interpretations. Okay, um, let's see if I, uh, here's the summary again. Let me get it up there. Okay, um, what's the next one? States that light does not encounter electron waves when it leaves the uh, water or the prism. They, they have two videos, one for water and one for glass. And there are prisms made of glass, so prism is a valid word there as well. They don't do prism. Uh, maybe I know why. I'll talk about that in a second here. But um, uh, here, here you see what I showed a couple times ago. Um, uh, there is air all around a piece of glass or a prism or whatever. So you have the red uh, waves there. That are the electron waves, supposedly, which we cannot imagine. They, they have to illustrate them to tell us what they're really talking about. And then you have the waves of light that are going through the piece of glass but the uh, the waves come from air go through the glass and then go back out into air so they do encounter atoms they do encounter electron waves also in air and so the question is uh, you know they never explain why um, why um, light uh, when it goes out of the prism right uh, you know it does it does encounter um, uh, atoms and electron waves as well. Why does it slow down there? So they haven't explained the interaction between the air molecules and light. They have not explained that. Okay, they, they have to show that. And it'd be nice if they made a, a video of that so that we could see their uh, mechanism, what they're proposing. Of course, they can't do that. They can't do that because uh, their, their whole interpretation is nonsense. That's why they can't do it. Okay, and here we have uh, their explanation. They say that the electric field of the atoms, uh, in other words, the electrons of the atoms in the glass slow down uh, the light going through air. And all it is is just a mathematical thing. There, there is no physical interpretation. What they do is just put a bunch of arrows there they don't, they don't show the, the uh, waves. They don't show the interaction between waves. What they just do is just say, look, there's an electric field that opposes the uh, incoming light, the light that comes uh, from the air into the glass. Okay, and they say, look, all these electrons, they move them around, okay? Uh, they say that they've got the electrons on the wrong side. That's fine. It doesn't matter uh, because right now we don't know. Are they saying that all these atoms realign? And how do they form waves? And even if they do that, then what is the interaction between the light coming into the glass and the electron waves, the alleged electron wave that opposes that incoming uh, wave front? Okay, so, th so there's, there is no physical interpretation, not, not from, from these folks. And until they draw it, until they illustrate it, you know, we don't have any idea what they're talking about. Let's see if there was something else I wanted to say about that. Yeah, here's another issue, and that's, um, I brought this up, that, you know, if, if, um, if uh, light comes into a prism, it breaks into color, white light, right? When it goes out, if uh, there is nothing to prevent it, like they say that there are no atoms or electrons or anything out there, like if they do this in outer space, well, then we should have white light coming back out again. You know, uh, why do we still have colors? I mean, what you really get is not this. You get this other one. Give me a second here. See if we can get it up here. This is what you get. Okay. When you do the experiment, you get something like that. You get colors coming out. And their prediction, to use that word, is this. That you should have white light coming back out. Because now uh, light returns to its original speed that it had before it went into the prism. Okay, so, so they have uh, a series of problems with their explanations, okay? And last but not least, we have uh, that they confuse um, amplitude for speed. Now, I think that was the big one because that's what they were trying to prove with the video. And here's uh, Bozo Lincoln again, who makes a lot of money, more money than he deserves. And I, yeah, I like to ridicule these guys. 
And this is what he's saying. And I want you to pay close attention to that red arrow on your right. If you look at uh, the wave, the wave at the top is the electron wave. The red one and number two is the light wave. And the third one is the wave uh, that it goes through the prism. In other words, it goes slower according to them because the blue electron wave slows the red light wave down somehow they don't show the interaction they just say it is so okay and and there these are their words the one that you read there on the bottom it says let's go here when one wave is moving at a different speed than the other one the result is a different wave that's all they say okay this is the entire mechanism but one that has a different speed than either of the two if we add the two top waves mathematics which have different speeds the bottom wave also moves but slower and you can see that's not the case because when you look at where the red arrow is now when it starts again the two waves are moving at the same speed okay what what this guy is confusing is amplitude which is the up and down uh you know the height of the wave the all we're doing is making the wave go higher so when you look at it closely, all he's doing is doing amplitude, and he calls this speed. He confuses amplitude with speed. And that's the mechanism that these so-called professionals, authority, right, are proposing for why light goes slower through a prism or through glass or through any denser medium than air, like water, for example. So you be the judge. You uh, go and verify <laughs> run your own test, reach your own conclusions. Uh, if you like to swallow authority because you, you simply conclude that all these geniuses cannot be wrong, well, oh, fine. I mean, I can't do anything about that. All I'm saying, I'm, all I can do is present my case, show you that these guys have no idea whatsoever what they're talking about. You do have people like Feynman, even Niels Bohr and uh, Susskind, uh, more modern today, you know, all these people saying they don't understand their own theories. No one believes them. They say, no, of course you understand your theory. Otherwise, we wouldn't have computers. We wouldn't have GPS. And that's what people have in, in their mind, ignorant people have in their minds. No, these people don't understand the theory. They will never understand their theory because they're using the wrong uh, mediator, particles. You can't do physics with particles, discrete particles, because you can't get them to move in the first place. How do you move a discrete bead that forms the ether or that uh, forms some kind of particle from quantum? How do you get it to move in the first place? Why does it move? The only way you're going to get it to move is if another one bumps into it. Why did that one move? And so, so again, they do it with bumps, one hitting the other one and hitting the other one. Where's this first bump coming from? From, you know, outside of space-time? Who, who's pushing the first the first particle that's the issue so you can talk about pressure you can talk about a lot of nonsense and and what you need to do is explain what uh what causes that pressure what is the origin of that it's like trying to explain what causes motion to begin with good luck with that one